You've probably seen some of the incredible images from the James Webb Space Telescope released by NASA, but what you might not know is that almost all the JWST data, and data from other space telescopes, is publicly available. This means that we astronomy enthusiasts and artists can try our hand at working with some of the most remarkable images ever captured. In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly download the raw data files from the public archive, then I'll briefly show you how and why I built an add-on for Blender that takes care of the necessary technical steps to transform and convert the data into a format we can work with more artistically, without requiring any clunky third-party softwares. Finally, I'll show you how I use Blender's compositor to process and colorize the images. So jumping in, we're going to want to search up the MAST, M-A-S-T, portal and go to the Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes. Here at the top, you'll see we have this random search option. I want to point this out since it's a really cool way to find less well-known images without needing to know what you're looking for. In this video though, I'm going to be working with the Southern Ring Nebula, so I'll need this advanced search option. On a side note, I was originally going to work with the Cosmic Cliffs of the Carina Nebula for this video, but when I went to record the tutorial, I discovered that some of the data was strangely missing. I reached out to the archive, and apparently some files encountered a software bug during a recent reprocessing, but they should be back up soon after this video comes out. Okay, so we're looking for science data from the JWST mission, and we know that we want image data. Oh my. In my experience, you'll want to keep the number of records below a few thousand at the most. Fortunately for us, the James Webb Gallery lists the proposal ID with its images. This will let us narrow down our search to something much more manageable. We can also see from the gallery that the images were taken with the near-infrared camera, NearCam, and that narrows things down even more. Typically, images with this blue symbol next to them are great for making nice final products, and we can also hop over to the album view to see a rough version of what the images look like. Now, for a quick explanation, regular images are made up of three color channels, red, green, and blue. We can slice these apart into three grayscale images with one for each channel that, when combined, produce the full color image. We use these three color channels since these are what our eyes see. Regular cameras capture a red, green, and blue image simultaneously, but space telescopes capture one color at a time, and they're not just red, green, and blue. For our image here, you can see that we have six images of different wavelengths. Here's where those wavelengths are on the color spectrum. These separate images will make up the individual color channels of our final image. To download the images properly, we'll want to click this Add to Basket option for each dataset, instead of just clicking Download. This way we can remove the data we don't need. Once all our data is in our basket, we can see that there's several files for each image. We only need the science data in the FITS format though. Now we can select everything and click download. This will still probably take a minute. Fortunately for us, the free software GIMP can let us take a look at what we're working with right out of the box. If we load in one image, you'll see we actually have several images in our image. We only want the first one though, and if we increase the exposure, you'll see what the image actually looks like. If we bring in another image though, it's very clear the images were not captured from the exact same orientation, so we'll need to align them if we want to stack them and use them as color channels. There are softwares out there that do this, but they are quite clunky to use and or cost money. And since manually aligning the images is extremely difficult, I spent some time improving my Python skills and wrote an add-on for Blender that takes care of this problem automatically. For a brief rundown on how the code works, 
I'll print out some of the metadata from the image stored in the image's header. You can see here the image has two WCS axes, which are storing the coordinate data. These axes are actually tangent to the declination and right ascension of the center of the image, essentially telling us which way is north and which way is east for the center of the image. We can extract these axes from two images and find the transformation matrix required to transform them to each other. Then we can simply reproject one of our images based on this matrix, scale it to the size of the reference image, and they will stack perfectly. Now we can simply save our new image in the .exr format so that we can preserve all the information and so we can bring it into Blender. I spent far longer than I'd like to admit turning this into a Blender add-on, but I got it working in the end. I've made the add-on available for free since I hope this will make astronomy more approachable. If you'd like to support me and my projects though, I've also put a link to my Patreon in the description. You can get early access to projects like this along with some of my projects that don't make it to being videos. You can install the add-on just like normal, but for the very first time you do it, you'll need to click this Install Dependencies button here in the Preferences panel. This just installs a couple Python packages that are bundled with the add-on for Blender's Python interpreter. Once it's installed, just restart Blender and it's all set up. You'll see now we have this new Astro Blend panel in the compositor. To use it, we'll select the folder that contains all of our fits images, then we'll select one of the images to serve as our reference. I've also altered the code so that it saves a full resolution image and one with a lower resolution we can set here, so we can work with lower resolution versions while we're working in the compositor, then just replace them with the full resolution versions once we're ready to save the final image. There's also this fix stars option, which uses some linear interpolation to remove the occasional black spots in the centers of really bright stars with extremely bright pixel values. This actually occurs because the stars are so bright that the light value goes above the maximum storable value and thus gets recorded as infinity, which is not a number. I'm just going to change the workspace layout a bit. Once we're ready, we'll click Convert Fits and the add-on will take care of everything. Blender might look like it's crashing, but it's just doing a lot of processing. On my old laptop, this takes about a minute to process all the Southern Ring Nebula images. And this isn't terrible for two and a half gigabytes of data, but when I can get around to it, I wanna rewrite the code to take advantage of multiprocessing, which should speed up the process significantly. Once we see that the FITS files have been converted, let's click import small EXRs to bring the images into our project. Combining the images is actually pretty straightforward. We just need to multiply each image by the color channel we want it to be, Shorter wavelengths correspond to being bluer, while longer ones are redder. Then just add the images together like so. We clearly need to bring our exposure way down. I really like using Blender for stacking images because the new AGX view transform makes our image look really nice almost right out of the box. I usually adjust the gamma a bit and I like to use the despeckle node to clear it up a bit as well. We can also set the black level of our color channels by subtracting a small amount and setting all negative values to zero like so. This is really helpful for images with a lot of haze. I know it might seem like cheating, but I'll also boost the exposure of just my red channel a bit. Realistically, each filter spans a different range of wavelengths, and on top of that, the images were exposed for different durations, so I think this is a perfectly valid artistic choice. This really is a data visualization after all. That image looks pretty good to me, so let's fetch the high-res versions, swap these out, and save our image. 
Anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, consider liking and subscribing and all that YouTube jazz. Again, there's links to download the add-on and to my Patreon in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, cheers.